There's a certain mindset that happens when you come into a studio, uh, which is trying to get everything perfect and, and just you know fine tune all the elements. You know, usually the tune comes in uh, almost preformed. That's not what this project was about. This project was about the collaboration, the writing and arranging that would happen between two people. One that largely comes from a you know a melodic role. Um, and one that largely comes from a rhythmic role. Kenny Malone and I have had a lot of uh, different experiences together, uh, traveling on the road uh, from time to time, playing at festivals and also uh, playing on different folks' records. He brings such a wonderful, warm, and personal vibe to every musical situation that I've ever been in with him. He talks about emotion in music all the time, and he really looks for the feeling and the groove. And, um, and, and those are things to me that, that, that I can trust. When I first asked Kenny to be part of this project, he said, this is, uh, this is great because I've got uh, this djembe piece that I've been working on. It uses the A pentatonic scale. I've been experimenting with five different tuned uh, djembes, and uh, I'd really love to hear what it sounds like with the fiddle. And so uh, there was, it was music that he had, uh, he had already started to develop that he was excited about. And I thought that, well, this is a great starting point for us. Man, that sounds really cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. It's nice. We made an arrangement that used uh, the parts that he brought to the table, but we also used parts that developed between the two of us. So I like... Uh, I don't know if, the, if it sounds... Yeah, it was wonderful seeing what you were playing. You know? Yeah, so for what I was doing was more like a, a D minor. Instead, of, uh, oh, okay, in, okay. instead okay. of the B minor, I was playing like a four minor. We experimented with the different uh, sounds and notes the, and combinations that would happen when we would hit more than one drum at a time. Because these djembes are tuned to pitch, it really dictated to me uh, harmony. Well, uh... He's tuned them to an A pentatonic scale. However, there are other notes that are involved. Uh, the drums resonate at more than just those notes. And that was a real discovery for both of us. We, we knew that they were there, but we hadn't really examined what those notes were. Play, just play that drum for... His tune was in three different sections. It started with the main melody that uh, we hear. I like that. I'm good for that. And then five. And then it went to his lowest drum, and then it had a part where he went to his second lowest drum. And that was pretty much the structure that he had. And then F sharp minor. The 
hang there for a while. I learned the melody and that he had already started, and I thought, well, maybe I'd like to hear the phrasing be like this. Let me let me back up. Let's go to the, talk about the melody again. Uh, so, bing, doo, doo, da, doo, doo. I'd like to hear it like that. Okay. Straight. straight. should be pushed that I'd really like to beat the okay. top of it. Oh sorry. Yeah, yeah. There's some, there's some perfect combination of this here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, so the end is, the ending is straight. I want it to feel like we're, we we have a, a destination, we have a, a little journey that happens, and uh, and then you know it feels like we've we've come to yeah. you know, a conclusion. You know. I need one more. <laughs> <laughs> ah, focus. Once we learn the material, at least get a basic understanding of it, uh, that conversation can happen. Uh, Kenny can say something musically and I can respond to him. You, you just kind of hit a zone. You're, you're not worried about what am I going to play, what is coming up. You just, you know what's happening and you can just give yourself to the music at hand and just really focus on each other and it, it, it's awesome. Another thing that was really special for me was getting the opportunity to talk to Kenny at length about his past and uh, his present. I usually bring all my toys because I have zones of sound, you know. How do you mean? Like wooden sounds, metal sounds, the shaker sounds, you know, different zones that I can use. You think of those materials for different moods or yeah. emotions? Do and you... how it fits with the lyrics and how it fits with the vocal voice, like a, whether it's a deep vocal or a high-pitched. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I was one of the early sessions that I w w uh, was able to do with you, I think it was with Tim O'Brien. Yeah. And uh, I remember you asking to see the lyrics. And I mean, I had never asked to see the lyrics. Yeah. You know, and, and here, you know, you were here and you were asking to see that. I was like, wow, Kenny's looking at the lyrics. Maybe I should start looking at some lyrics for, for the tunes, it's too. Something you know, I learned it. Yeah. You know, it's, when I discovered it, it was like so simple. I never heard the lyrics to a song before I came to Nashville. Mm -hmm. I was into jazz and classical music and, you know, I knew all that stuff inside and out, but I never paid any attention to the lyrics of the songs. Each vocalist was like a, a, a horn, mm -hmm. another horn that could change sibilances and they could change vowel sounds, and, but it was all a melodic form, you know, right. like a horn. I, I've had the same issue or same uh, situation for me, uh, we, and I think of myself as an instrumentalist first, yeah. and it's always been about learning the melody, learning the chords, playing the right chords, staying in time, and you know, or staying out of the way of the vocal. You you know when the vocal is there and enhancing when you can, right? But not. You know, it took me a long time to actually listen to what the lyrics were. It was kind of it was a secondary thought yeah. to, to all that other stuff to, about too. execution. I mean, until I started listening to Don Williams. I mean, he was the, really the first, you know, that and Drift Away, Give Me yeah. the Beat, boys. It, you know, that's really the first time I listened to lyrics. Man, it's a beautiful uh, track. I, I, I did not know that you played on it for, you know, when I first met you. And as soon as I heard that, you know, and every time I hear that song, I think of it differently. Now I, I picture you when I hear the song, and uh, you know, yeah, that was I, like uh, power. I mean, in that small drum booth, in a pentagon-shaped drum booth. Where was it? At Quad. Mm -hmm. It was the old drum booth, though, in the old studio, you know, with the burlap on the walls and the, you know, and the small pentagon-shaped drum booth, and it sounded great in there, but yeah. Gene wanted me to hit him hard. Are there any instances you can think of, uh, you know, musical or life things that have changed the way you approach music or yeah. your instrument? Yeah. Um, when I first came here, I was from a big band jazz background. I mean, that was my first love. And when I first got here, I could play anything, you know. And I was back there playing like this Montuno beat on some kind of a bluegrass song and the producer stops the band. He says, what the hell are you doing back there? He says, I don't need any cymbals. He says, you can pack up your cymbals. All I need is a kick drum and a backbeat. That's it. And from that moment, I started listening to each note and how you arrive at the note, and how you go through the note, and play to the next note, you know, and what happens in between those notes, mm -hmm. and started really hearing what was actually taking place. Yeah. And it brought me back to this simplicity, you know, the time above all, and where you're putting the time is one of the main mm -hmm. things, and then reinforcement is another thing. Yeah, you know, but just learning that simplicity—that was my first. That's a thing hard lesson. There. I That's know. A... I mean, to get it down, get a song down to its most logical essence, just the essence of the song. Well, Kenny, thank you so much. Thank it's you, been Katie. it's been so great. It's, it's been great, really, brother. And uh, I really man. appreciate all your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's been a gas. Yeah. Man. More to come. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect from these last two days. Uh, this was way more than I expected. Kenny is 74 years old. The other day we were outside and he said that, um, I figure I got at least another, I got another 30 years. I'll make it to about 104, 106, something like that. I got a lot of good learning ahead of me. 
Kenny is such a dynamic player. He, uh, he takes the smallest sounds, the, the rubs his fingers on the head of the drum. He just a little tiny tick on the cymbal. Uh, you know, all of that is super powerful for him. At this point, what's going to end up happening is uh, I'm going to comb through everything that we've got and I'm going to listen for gems of uh, experiences, that hopefully things that I remember as being really special uh, when they happened here. I hope when I hear them they uh, remind me as being as special and I can't wait to share them and find musical output for them. And I'm also going to listen to the music they were recorded, you know, the full pieces, and uh, and get those to a, a, a place to, uh, you know, uh, listening uh, quality to hand out and share with people. Yeah, man.